It's been a hundred days now that Musqueam and supporters stand their ground in Sasnam. It's thousands of years old graveyards right on the on-ramp to the Arthur Lang Bridge. Well, I see a bright future too. And so believe me, I'm just getting started. We're ahead of target in cutting the backlog and permitting. We've invested resources to make sure that businesses get the answers that they need. I released an in-depth report about the problems at Community Living BC. Problems that were waiting on my desk when I became Premier. We lose something crucial to our future if we forget about our past. And so we have to remember our history, know where we came from. And in British Columbia, we're a province that was built on the resource industry. Visits at the legislature or Christy Clark's office didn't solve the issue so far, as Christy prefers to go to dinner parties paid for by the Century Group, who is a stakeholder on the side of the occupiers. No matter how much the wheel squeaks, the grease goes to the greasy hands. So, today on August 10th, 2012, Prisoner Justice Day and the memorial and celebration of standing the ground and 100 days of resistance as Sesnam, who started with a march that led up to the front line. The street there was taken for a couple of hours and even so it was not planned but through the help of Vancouver police the actual bridge also was blocked for about the same time. A series of speakers including Jenny Kwan and Scott Fraser showed their support and outrage about the ongoing issue. You have proposed solutions. You have offered up solutions to resolve the matter. You have said to the government that there is an opportunity to do a land swap, to honor the people, the remains that have been buried here, to respect and keep intact the historical site, uh, and to move forward in that way. For some strange reason, the provincial government has refused to acknowledge that, to refuse to engage, to find that solution. And as I understand, even the developer wants to move forward and wants to engage in that land swap opportunity. So you actually have the solutions at hand. And somehow the BC Liberals have refused to engage uh, in finding resolution to the matter. And of course now we're at a juncture where permits are being renewed, even though the government knowingly, even though the provincial government know that this is a secret site. I think across all nations, people will know and acknowledge that when you have our ancestors' remains of the diseases being buried there, that is a burial site, that is a sacred site. This is complicated and it's simple. The simple part is it's about respect, it's about dignity, it's about, it's about listening. And, and we have everyone at the table listening and willing to work except the provincial government. So here we stand 100 days later, a solution at hand and a government seemingly unwilling to be at the table with respect. So we'll continue the fight and uh, I want you to know that no matter where I go in the province, uh, First Nations all over the province know about what's happening here. They're all watching, they're all supporting. And, uh, and um, I think the power of that unity will, uh, will eventually bring justice to the issue and we'll stand with you until that happens. Thank you. Thank you.
We represent about 32,000 nurses across the province. And if you're wondering why nurses are supporting you, it's because we understand fully that in order to advance the health and social well-being of our members and our communities, that we cannot deny traditional practices and cultural security. That severely compromises the health of our First Nations Inui and Métis people. We believe that the actions and fundamental principles of reconciliation are mandatory for Aboriginal peoples to live healthier lives. We believe, however, that reconciliation is not a one-way street, and we strongly encourage our provincial and federal government to utilize this opportunity to build a stronger relationship with its Aboriginal peoples. Honoring the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People by giving you freedom to protect and maintain your cultural traditions. And this sacred site is the right thing for our governments to do. The lack of proactive engagement by our governments for the last 100 days is not the right thing to do and it is not acceptable. We want to acknowledge your willingness to work with all parties involved and a desire to turn this traditional site into a public cultural heritage park. This gesture of giving back to all people through education and sharing is the epitome of reconciliation. Your actions over the last hundred days and beyond are a beacon of hope and determination for all Canada's Aboriginal peoples. And we are honoured honored to stand with you and walk with you and will continue to do so for as long as it takes for a stronger and healthier tomorrow, not only for our Aboriginal population, but for all Canadians. I'm here as an organizer and an activist on unceded traditional territory. I'm here to support the Muskegon people. I'm here to say that this has been designated a heritage site since 1933, which means the provincial government has the legal responsibility to, to ensure that it stays a heritage site. The First Nations sisters and brothers and children here today are saying we need to support everyone's ancestors, not just the ancestors of Christy Clark or the funders of Christy Clark. We need to be here and stand up for this site to belong to the people who used to have this land and still legally have this land. We're here today in great numbers to support a hundred days of people standing up on the rights of First Nations people here and across this country. You know, they really, really need to follow what they come forward with to the people. How can you protect a heritage house that's only a hundred years old on a heritage site of Cessnam. And then you can't even protect human remains that are over 4,000 years old. You know, that's what our government doesn't understand. We're just here trying to help our ancestors. I'd like to thank everyone for your support and your encouraging words for the Musqueam people, for the for the Aboriginal people of Canada. You know, I mentioned before that it's just bestowed upon the Musqueam people that we were chosen to come forward, to be an example, to let the people know that we're not going to stop until we have taken care of our ancestors the proper way, the proper protocol. You know, there'll probably be many more nations coming up behind us throughout Canada. You know, they've always said that there's always examples, you know, and back in the early 90s, you know, another example is the Oka over in, in, in Eastern Canada. They're trying to build a golf course on a, on a, on a heritage burial site, and their people stuck up for their ancestors. That's all we're trying to do, simple solution. <laughs> so we never gave that property away. We never told anyone they can build on top of our burial site. But the province still extends 
the development permits. The, this is why we're here. They're still allowed to go and dig there. So we're standing here, you know, for a hundred days. So I actually challenged the Aboriginal minister yesterday and I said, what a beautiful legacy it would be for this premier to leave us with, to protect all First Nations burial sites all over BC. So I asked her to take that message back to the premier. Because the saddest thing that's happened is other nations from around the province has come down here and told us, us too. They're digging up our bodies too. It's happening to us too and no one cares. Our bodies are in boxes. Our bodies are blowing down dams. Our bodies are ground up into asphalt. Who else would they do that to? They need to stop doing it. So I want her to leave that legacy for us. Protect First Nations burial sites. British Columbia is only 6% privately owned. The Crown holds most of this land and it's ours. Hopefully we'll get Christy Clark to finally smarten up. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath though. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, Around noon, runners were sent out to Christy Clark's office to deliver her thousands of signatures. Former Chief Delbert Guerin handed the petition to one of Christie's servants. Runners and supporters stayed for drumming and singing before they went back to the front line in Cessna. Um, we're having a hundred days now uh, that you're protesting here. Yes. Uh, so, what did you reach so far? What? So, so far the permits that the province extended uh, that issued um, that were set to expire on June 30th have, expended, have been extended three times and we as a community find that very insulting that the province continues to extend those permits and that sends us a message that they are siding with the developers and the landowners. Uh, last night Mary Polak said the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs and Reconciliation said in a press conference that the province has an obligation to the landowner and the developer. Well, I'd like to say that she has an obligation to us as well. We still have Aboriginal title over this land. Those are our ancestors and that soil is the blood of them and their bodies. And it's unacceptable that they're choosing to have an obligation to the landowner and the developer. And they keep proving that by extending these permits. So, um, but what are you expecting out of that, uh, like considering that for when that was sold to the developer, you guys weren't even allowed to purchase land anyways. What, what do you expect like by writing to the province? At the very least, we're expecting the province to rescind the permits and to let us acquire the land back in a respectful way. Uh, in an ideal world, what, what morally and ethically should happen is the province should be buying this land back and giving it back to us. That's, that's the right thing for them to do, and they're not willing to even to discuss that. It is very upsetting. It's very upsetting that this is happening. And it's very upsetting that the province isn't treating this with dignity and respect. The Mary Polak herself has, has never been here. 
She is responsible for Aboriginal affairs and reconciliation and she has never been here to see this with her own eyes. And I just think that's appalling that someone who's responsible for reconciliation hasn't made the time or the effort in a hundred days to come here.